in this video, how to find the mode given a list of values in Python. So here we have a list of values, a list of integers, and how are we gonna find the most commonly occurring value. Well, here I have four solutions for you. These are complete solutions that you can go and take right now and implement in your code. And we can run our code and we can see that for all four solutions, we're getting the value of 99. We're getting 99 because that is the most commonly occurring value in this list appearing three different times. So we have four solutions here for you today, and I'm going to go through each solution in a little bit more detail. The best way to get started is to remind ourselves what is mode exactly. So mode is the value that appears most often in a list of data values. So we're looking for what is gonna happen most often. What's the value that appears most often? So we run our code and we see that the most often occurring value in this particular data set is 99. And we could you know, add another instance of 99 and it's gonna be 99 again because we're only adding to what's already the top value. So we have four solutions here and I gave each solution a little bit of a nickname. So we have the best vanilla solution. We have the best simple solution requiring basically the least amount of code. We have an extra solution implementing uh, collections and the counter value. And then we have a fourth solution which is the best for multiple modes. And by multiple modes, I mean when there is a tie. And let's just say that there's actually a 102 here. And then that way, you know, how are we gonna be dealing with that? Because we actually have uh, three instances of 102 and three instances of 99. And all these solutions here are generally set up for a situation where there's only one mode, but what if there are two modes? So we're gonna to come to that at the end, but let's start at the beginning and let's start with our vanilla solution. So I call this the vanilla solution because we're making use of the max built-in function. And then kind of secondarily, we're also making use of the set built-in function. Now this set argument that I have going on there, uh, wrapping the speed list and set, I mean, that's not totally necessary and the code is still going to work the same in most use cases. And you'll actually see a lot of examples where they don't have set here, but you can have the uh, set built-in function here as well. So I wanted to show you that both options you're going to find online and maybe someone in the comments can kind of speak to when you might use one or the other. But at a high level, we're basically only making use of the max built-in function and the uh, secondary optional argument that's available to us in the max built-in function, which is the key argument. I have a whole video on the max built-in function. Um, I'll try to link that here somewhere, but you can go check out my videos on the max built-in function, as well as on the set built-in function to learn more about how this secondary optional argument works with max. Now this solution is what I would probably call the best standard solution if you don't want to implement the statistics library. If you don't want to import statistics, then you're going to be better off going with this vanilla solution. And we can go to Stack Overflow and we can look at finding the mode of a list, right? This is gonna be one of the most popular results for how to find the mode in Python. And you can see that the very top results vote the most upvoted uh, solution here for finding the max, finding the mode rather, is with this solution that I have implemented here as my vanilla solution. So that's why we have this one at the top, is that's actually reflecting what you're gonna find on Stack Overflow as well. So that's the first vanilla solution for how to find the mode in Python. Now, the second solution here is using the statistics module. Now, this module is a part of, this, of the Python standard library, so technically it is a part of Python out of the box, but it's a little bit ugly that you have to import statistics. Um, if statistics was, was part of the Python language completely out of the box without an import, this would be an even cleaner solution, and I think more developers would be more likely to reach for this solution. But for the time being, you're going to have to import statistics, and then it's as simple as doing statistics.mode and wrapping mode around the list. So of course, we can run that again, and we can see we are getting 99 for the mode here using the statistics module. All right, so our third solution, which I'm calling the extra solution, 
it, this is one that it looks a little bit ugly. I think everyone can admit that here. We're having to do an import uh, and then we're using this sort of out of the box function thing called counter. And we can go and take a look at what counter is. Counter is a dict subclass for counting hashable objects. And so this is going to create a counter for you with key value pairs. And I'll show you what that looks like. So we can go in and we can print out our data to just see like what is happening at this first, uh, this first step of our solution. So we can run that and we can see that the counter occurred and it's basically counting the number of times uh, we're getting those values. So it's creating that key value pair where the key is uh, the integer and then the value is the count. So that's pretty much what counter does. So pretty cool thing to know about, just something to add to your bag of tricks as a Python developer. Now taking a closer look at what's happening in this counter solution, we could actually go in and remove uh, that index. And when we do that, we can see we're getting that 99.3. So we're getting uh, you know, a different sort of structure of data that we can play with where you're actually getting the count along with it. So if you don't want the count along with it, you can add that additional indexing in, or you, know, you might be curious what happens if we remove even that. Well, then we're getting a larger data type around it. So you do have to drill down into this solution, which uh, is part of why it's kind of an ugly solution. But at the end of the day, another way to get to mode and find the mode of a list in Python with only a few lines of code. Now for number four here, let's clear our screen a little bit. And I'm going to have to zoom out for a second because I want to make sure we get everything on one page. So best for multiple modes. So this is interesting to us here because we literally have that situation where we have three instances of 99 and then we have three instances of 102. But the problem is when we run our code here with these solutions that we're given, uh, we're only getting the 99 and it's not really recognizing the fact that there was a tie. And it's basically just providing us which one occurred first. And this is something that's talked about in Stack Overflow uh, in some of the responses here. Uh, you can see that there was the, the counter based solution as well that we talked about. And what they, I wonder if I'll even be able to find it, but it was in fact in here, that's where this code comes from. And this is where you're gonna have a multiple mode scenario. So this guy talks about it, right? So he's saying, use statistics like we said, use max like we said, but the problem with these two solutions is that they don't work in a multiple mode scenario. The first returns an error, the second returns the first mode. So how are you gonna deal with the solution where you have multiple modes? And maybe you could get a set of those values and return those values. So what I mean by that, uh, and if anyone has been closely looking at this function, they might've noticed that we're drilling down into the first index in place zero here. So what happens if we remove that? When we run our code, we're actually getting the full list of potential values, right? So we're getting 99 and 102. If we added another 102, well, the clear winner is just gonna be 102, um, but that value is still going to be in a list. So it's kind of always returning a list, as you can see by uh, the built-in function that we have wrapped on the outside, uh, just to the right of this return statement. So this is a different way of doing things. Obviously I could drill down into that index and then once again, we're just getting the value and not the list because uh, this is occurring outside of the list built-in function. So that's outside of it. Uh, but when we remove that, we get our list of potential values, right? We could add another 99 and then we have the tie represented here in the list. So there's a couple ways that you could play with this return statement and the way that you might want to return this data to your code or to your user. But I think it's definitely important in a, a solution to be aware of the situation where there could be multiple modes. There could be multiple values that occur the same number of times. So you have to be aware of that tie scenario and be able to deal with that both in a programming interview and also in day-to-day -day scenarios. So for everyone watching, I hope this video was helpful to you. 
This has been four solutions, how to find the mode in Python, how to find the mode of a list of values in Python. Thanks so much for watching.